Yeah, it's Syracuse. Well, you're not far from. Uh, you're not far from the fabled uh, Tony Soprano. He was supposed to have lived in the oranges in that show. Yeah, well, the oranges are in. Yeah, you know, like the oranges are right next to Newark, so it was always sort of an interesting dichotomy because the money was in the oranges, and you know, Newark was a disaster area, and you know, so it's, it's kind of a weird arrangement. But yeah, neither one of them I would consider. I mean, they're not really our county. Do you still have plans to run for something local? Um, well, I talk like I'm going to do it sometime, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's no chance I'm going to get elected, so it's just for show. You know, it wouldn't be much point to it. Well, Hunter S. Thompson ran for sheriff in Colorado, down near one. So don't count yourself out. Oh, no, there's no, no, no doubt no, here. No. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> you know, you know, it, this is like a 90% Republican district, you know, the town. And then the county is like an 80% Republican. So it's just, it's just, you know, we just, these, <clears throat> these are exactly the kind of people I'd, I'd want to hurt, <laughs> you know, that live here. What's up with uh, New Hampshire? I hear that's like a really hardcore libertarian state. I don't know if it's not being from there. I don't really know the politics, but I hear it's pretty hardcore libertarian. I mean, they're, the motto of the state is, you know, you know, don't tread on me. It's got a big snake on it or something. So there's very uh, yeah, and it's got like 17 people in it. You know, so I mean, I, you know, I don't know if it's much of a story there. I mean, it, yeah, it's where money goes. To you know, if you want to live on a nice estate, and you know, so I mean, it has a lot of advantages that other places don't have. I mean, it's a lot of people have their second homes, you know, kind of state. Okay, I just heard the politics is pretty radicalized in that state. I think didn't the the Tea Party movement come out of there? Not sure. Yeah, it might have. I mean, all those you know, those old Connecticut. New Hampshire, these are all kind of weird little states, so the politics has always been very, um, very educated, you know, but, you know, education also gets people to be pretty phantasmagorical, so it's a lot of idealism that doesn't go anywhere. Phantasmagorical is one of Gary's standard terms. It's uh, part of his uh, shortlist lexicon. Right. It's it's short for saying, "Why the fuck are you bothering me with this? There's no point in it. It's unanswerable. And even if we did have an answer for it, it wouldn't make a difference. So it saves a lot of time. Phantasmagorical." Yeah, when it also means people thinking that there's planets out of out in space made out of gingerbread and that everything's going to be okay, we should just go to the gingerbread planet. So I mean, it's, it's all how you phrase that one, you know. You know. Wait, is that Tommy? What's Tommy doing in that clip? I don't get that. Say hi to Bella. I did see some of Bella. I did see some of your blog TV, but, you know, I hate blog TV. And I was also I had to go to work and stuff. It's the middle of the day, so it's kind of hard to hang out there. Got to turn your mic off there, girl. That girl. Oh, look at that. Like this. It's probably not the room for you. <laughs> yeah, you're probably a little bit too cherry for this room. <laughs> yeah, come back when you got some pit to you.
So obviously, Gary, you're staying at home this Labor Day weekend, as am I. I, I personally, I can't stand to travel on the holidays, man, any of them. Memorial Day, Labor Day, Fourth of July. Anytime I go travel somewhere, I come back, you know, just dealing with all the frickin' road rage. And when I get to where I'm going, whether it's some beach or whatever, you know, resort in the mountains, uh, not resort, but, you know, place in the mountains, the people I find there are people I'd rather not be around, so I just can't wait to get back home. The whole thing just seems like a waste of time. So I think staying at home over the holidays is probably the best idea that there is. You know that someday I will. Someday. Retarded. Retarded. I can sing that bad. Um, yeah, well, in my youth, I did a lot of traveling, so I was never home, you know, for <laughs> most holidays. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm glad I saw a lot of places, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, you can't get me anywhere anymore. So, I mean, it's sort of a moot question for me, just because of my anxiety disorder, but, uh, yeah, I would not be a traveler. Or if I traveled, it'd be like, yeah, I traveled for six months. <laughs> you know, I mean, I hate the idea, I hate those transition things you, know, you get used to being somewhere and oh it's time to go oh shit I was getting really comfortable here so I really hated traveling in the sense of just traveling for the sake of traveling I mean I always kind of wanted someday when I was young you know do the motorcycle thing and just you know ride around the country and just stay in places for you know ah, yeah I'll wash dishes in a diner for, for a month or two here and then I'll drive down the road four or five hundred miles and, you know, try something else. But, you know, of course I never did it. Yeah, that's another thing I think is going to go by the wayside once, you know, gas hits ten dollars a gallon is this uh, traditional summer road show. That's going to be a thing of the past. Happy motoring culture is going to go bye-bye. Yeah, I mean, it should have happened already. I mean, by my calculation, I don't know how oil prices have stayed as low as they are. I mean, at least gasoline prices. So I am surprised that we got another, we got away with another summer. Yeah, that's baffling to me, too. Somebody mentioned earlier in the chat that, you know, it's because of deflation. Maybe that's, maybe that's the balancing force uh, for uh, demand and flexibility is just... Uh, more and more people out of work. Yeah, but you figure the Chinese are desperate for oil. I mean, so you got to just figure that they'll pay more than us for it, you know, in my calculation. Because they can make more out of it. You know, they're going to do more productivity with it. And um, so, I mean, by that calculation, I would just think that, well, why won't these other, why wouldn't these countries go where they can get more money? But it must be the refining issue. You know, we have the refineries, so you know, and we export refined product, so maybe that has something to do with why we get sort of a free ride, it's because we do the refining. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, go, go well, ahead. I know uh, why diesel is so much higher than it used to be. It used to be a big plus on a diesel car uh, because diesel was a lot cheaper, <clears throat> but China's driven that up because a lot of their factory and a lot of their power I'm sorry, a lot of their uh, power plants uh, run on uh, diesel, and uh, it's not the sweet crude, it's the unrefined crude that they buy up, which, which we make diesel out of, so it, it's run the price up on that. Yeah, but that still almost feeds the argument, though, because it's like, yeah, diesel's easier to refine, and you can make it out of a lesser grade oil. You know what I mean? So it's almost like you're even like even more certain. Like, well, why wouldn't the premium stuff be even more expensive? You know, so it's still, you know, it's like there's still some sort of. Uh, you froze up again, Gary. Oh, he froze up again. Uh, Sub, what's the name of the coalition of uh, of Arab countries, the um, oil producing Arab countries? What's it called? OPEC. 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 OPEC, right. Well, I have a theory. I know traders drive it up 
I know commodities traders drive it up, uh, and I know supply and demand drives it up, but, but it seems to be when our economy is faltering a lot, lot uh, lately, uh, w that's when the price, uh, price it seem to sustain lower price as far as um, the hmm. gas goes. Well, and I'm, I'm just wondering if they, they really do directly. Tom get this around? Rub some. We can hear you. We can't rub her. There she is. Where's Gary at? Yeah, well, he's trying to get back in the room now. Anyway, gone again. I, I really think OPEC uh, seems to lighten up because they don't want to a um, they don't want a um, a pushback uh, from the, from their main supplier. Um, that being us. Uh, they're they're playing a burlesque game of spin the plates and keep all the plates spinning. Uh, it's just a right. It's a, it's a complete charade. Especially Saudi Arabia is the worst. Right. You know, they're they're not letting us know what they've got in reserve. They're saying they've got like, oh geez, I don't, I forget what it is, 257 billion barrels, and they've been at that for 20 years now. You know, bullshit. You don't, you can't drive my car uh, all around town for a week and come back and say, yeah, I didn't use any gas. It doesn't work that way. So they're 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 bullshitting the whole world because they know what's going to happen. You know, if if uh, if people find out that we're we're as low on oil as as, uh, as we actually are, uh, that's going to uh, spur a massive investment in uh, alternative energy, which they don't want. It's not in their interest. So they keep lying. Well, guess what? Bullshitting about their reserves. Even um, before that would happen, we could simply switch over to trading more with, like, uh, Mexico and Russia, who we actually already get most of our oil from. Yeah, but see, Mexico's got a real production problem. Mex Mexico's got its own domestic needs, and it's actually going to start importing oil. So, I mean, Mexico's fucked. They, they, they're they not going to be an importer, exporter anymore. <laughs> you know, so that's not going to be a good source, um, a convenient source. A controllable source, you know, it's not gonna be anything. So, um, yeah, you said something that was oh, something I wanted to respond to. What the hell was it? Um, damn it! Uh, I had a relevant comment and now it's gone. Well, what the hell? Well, Brazil has a nice uh, paradigm as far as I, I know. It's a completely different economic uh, system over there, um, and it's much smaller. But still, um, if you look at their cars, uh, all of them are flex cars that they uh, that they drive down there. So they they run on uh, very little amount of uh, gasoline and mostly on uh, on electric. Uh, so they don't have the same problems, but they don't have the same population, and therefore the same uh, issues that that we have, and the same economic system. But um, well, for the uh, for the solar age converting to ethanol uh, almost 30 years ago. They started converting their cars over to ethanol, so they got a huge jump on us. That's when we should have jumped on it back in the 70s. We waited way too long, and it's it's going to be a catastrophe. We just we waited too long. Right. Yeah, it's going to it's going to come back to bite us in the ass. But uh, that 800 billion dollar or 700 and 87 billion dollar um, tarp um, <clears throat> uh, project. A lot of it went towards gearing up um, our economy for a solar transfer for alternative energy. Uh, if you go and look at the um, the document, uh, an unbelievable amount of money went towards uh, funding uh, solar energy product uh, projects, uh, flex cars. Um, uh, solar panel systems for homes. Uh, in California, they are going to start subsidizing all the uh, solar panel installations, uh, which is going to be an unbelievable market down there as soon as they work out the kinks. And it was supposed to start weeks ago, but um, the FHA is having